Hello, we're back with episode two of the Bizarre MTG podcast. And uh, my name is Jonathan Medina. I'm here with Emma Partlow. Hi, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well from, I would say, sunny England, but it's quite dark and cloudy at the moment. But yeah, in the UK. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> is it raining over there? I always get the picture of like, it's raining in England for some reason. It's, it's, a, com- it's a typical theme. Like the UK is known for two things, tea and rain fortunately it's not raining at the moment so it's just very cold because we're in the midst of winter (laughs) right on so uh i i became familiar with your work from twitter so i saw Mm -hmm. i saw you promoting some of your stuff i think it was when you were writing for uh hipsters of the coast yep yeah so i so i became became interested when you started to write about writing and, and i've watched kind of your content creator journey a little bit but i don't know the origins of it i don't know uh you just showed up in my feed one day so i'd love to hear more about uh kind of your origins i I guess they call it the origin story or yeah you know where did you come from and and tell us about yourself in in terms of origin story of my writing um i started in early 2018 and to be honest with you it was just on a whim it wasn't anything um if you asked me two years ago oh you'd be writing for tcg player you'd be doing all this stuff i'd probably just laugh and just move carry on with my life um so the reason i started writing was because i was playing a lot of modern at the time and for people who aren't familiar with my content i used to write a lot about modern because it's like one of my favorite formats i I think it's a great format um and at the time i was playing a lot of eldrazi trom in modern and i was at that point where i was playing a lot of fnms and doing well and um, I just wanted to kind of lay out my thoughts instead of just storing it in my brain. I just wanted to process it. So that's where writing came into the picture. Um, so I just created like a basic Tumblr, more so for me, just to allow to process my content. Um, so I'd write about like FNM reports, short sideboard guides, just just a way for me to identify any mistakes, just to click, just to process my um, experiences more cleanly um and yeah I just put it on an open forum because my mindset was I've got nothing to lose from doing this so I might as well go for it um (laughs) but I have I have have a lot to gain from it so you know there's nothing to lose um after a few months of doing that I was uh approached by a like a, 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 a freemium site called mtg deck text they don't pay their writers or anything like that it's just a, a collective of contributors that just wrote about what they want to write about so I was offered to do modern I'm like sure you know again got nothing to lose there's no there's no hard commitment nor there is there any money out of it so if I find out it's not for me (laughs) right it's Um, a it's a low expectations because they're not paying you so you could you could duck out if you you yeah and I'm one of these people that likes to try everything once um I think it's good to know what you enjoy doing as well as what you don't enjoy doing because process of elimination is quite a powerful thing. Right. Um, so wrote for MTG, MTG deck text for a couple of months. Um, and then I was approached by wizards of the coast, which I thought, uh, not wizards of the coast, hipsters of the coast um, to write modern for them because I've networked with one of their writers. They were quite interested in hiring me. So, you know, I listened to what they had to offer. It was a paid gig. So, you know, I must be doing something right if I'm getting approached by a website um, right. who wants to pay me, you know, to write a week weekly articles about modern. So yeah, I took it naturally. You know, why wouldn't you? Um, but yeah, like eighteen months, I wrote for uh, wrote for Hipsters of the Coast, and then I was offered a a job at a TCG player. Wow. Where, yeah, where I write about. So I still kind of write about modern, but it's less about the format meta games and that sort of stuff, which is what I wrote a lot about at, at Hips of the Coast. Now I tend to focus on more budget stuff because that's what TCG player are really interested in. Being like a retailer, it kind of complements their brand quite well. So Right. So I have some questions about the journey. First of all, uh it didn't take very long, right? I mean No, in, I'm just really surprised. Yeah. Like we all have that goal of like, oh it'd be cool to write for like CFB, SCG, TCG, all these other initialisms of other <laughs> all the three-letter acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, 
but yeah, I didn't expect to land a TCG player gig. Um, you know, I'm glad it's, it's affirmation that I'm good at what I do, but I've never expected it in a million years. But yeah, go back to your question. I don't want to. No, no problem. Yeah. yeah, it's this is this is more your spotlight. So I love to hear from from you what what you have to say. So when you were doing the the Tumblr, it was kind of like a journal of sorts. Did did that help you? You said you did it to process. Did it do what you expected it to do? Did it did it overperform, underperform? What what was the process like? For me, it overperformed, but just because it overperformed for me doesn't mean it's gonna overperform overperform for someone else because we're all different. We all, all have different ways of processing and processing information, I guess. Um and where did you get this idea to write? Because this is a, a strange idea, right? If somebody was was to think about how do I improve my magic game, one of the first things that comes to mind is not let me write a Tumblr about it. Where did that idea come from? I just felt, um, I guess, because I talked to a lot of people about magic as well, about you know, cyborg guys, meta games, all that sort of stuff. Um, uh-huh. I think it was just from me just to get it off my mind, if that makes sense. That I've, I've I've got an output. There is a physical representation of what I'm thinking. I don't have to worry about it anymore. It's mm. on the internet. It's like it's like the equivalent of a diary, I guess. I think that's what I kind of saw it as like a magic diary. If you that's the yeah. closest way to relate it to. Have you done that in the past in your life? Like, did you did you have experience with writing or with writing a journal and know that oh, I do this in my everyday life to get things off my mind. Maybe it's um, good to do in magic, or is it just like a fresh thing that you did in starting with the magic stuff? So when I was in my early teens, I did have a diary. Um, again, for a similar reason, it's just to k- keep my mind light of any you know burdens, or just just to help me process stuff. Whether it's relationships, whether it's work, whether it's school, it was just a good way, just a good output for me. Some mm-hmm. people have different outputs, like they go to do exercise or they go out. Whereas for me, it was just good to write it because I have a physical representation of what I've processed and I can just forget about it because it's it's there as, there as a reminder if I need it sort of thing. And going back to the whole magic writing thing, it just helped me process my mistakes because I'm, I'm, I'm acknowledging what I've done or... Like there was a particular line that I could have took, you know, the, like the small finite details and just writing it down just helped me learn, which was the main thing. And I think it's very important to learn with like magic because the more you play, the better you get. So right. that was that was my approach. Do you ever look back at that Tumblr? Is it is it something yeah. people can it's, see it's, right now? Can they go there? I, I can put a link in it. It's still there. <laughs> yeah, do it. Do it. I, I'd love to see, uh, you know, it's kind of cool to see where you start. I mean... For some people, they're a little bit embarrassed. I might be embarrassed about. To some be of fair, first... I'm a touch embarrassed because it's not as good as the <laughs> stuff I do now. I, um, I think everyone, I, I would be too. So, how long were you doing that before you got the the MTG Deck Tech uh, gig? Yeah, um, I think it was like two or three months, and then wow. um, yeah, because I started posting this stuff on Tom uh, on uh, Twitter just because yeah. Eldra- at the at that time Eldrazi Charm was quite popular. Um, it was one of the top decks in modern along like Wix's Death Shadow. So right. there was a lot of people wanting to find out stuff about it. So, so there was a, a need for the content and you were creating... Yeah, it's it's one of the it's that old saying in content, if you're second in content, you might as well be last. So it's important just to have it out there for people. And I'm very um I'm one of these people that loves helping other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always believe information should be shared and not withheld. Mm-hmm. So, again, going back to my point, I had nothing to lose doing this, so I might as well just share it with other people. I'm not like a pro player or anything like that. I'm not going to pay all my content because I'm not good enough to warrant that. So it's, there's nothing wrong with just putting stuff out there. Um, I have put a link to my blog in the um, into the Discord, and there's lots of rambling. <laughs> all right cool cool we'll, we'll, we'll be sure to check that out and uh i'm gonna i'm gonna look you it can over. tell it's all because i haven't updated the tcg player yet, but it's still, <laughs> it's still the case cogging them on there <laughs> no no the uh i guess the next question is so you got you got offered a gig to work for exposure and some people um i, I wouldn't say okay maybe it wasn't to work for exposure but it wasn't a paid gig 
what how did you feel about that like did they offer editing was it uh because i know a lot of times i think sometimes that kind of approach gets a little bit of a bad rap where it's like oh you know you'd never want to work for exposure but i think a lot of people who got into the content game did work for exposure per se to get there i mean i know i i wanted exposure when i was first writing i was looking for eyeballs you know mm-hmm. tell me about I th- that i think for me when i got the deck text um like gig um i think it was just more of a point of this is the point where i find out if i enjoy writing or not okay you know, there i've got i've got a, a relatively biggish platform for people to read my stuff um that goes out on twitter and facebook every week you know i can see feedback from people i can network with other people and just see just get a feel for it like right. like tapping into the shallow end of the pool i um, see so this was your experimentation period yes. so to speak yeah um so i wasn't i was at this point where i wasn't too sure if i wanted to do this you know quote unquote like full time sort of thing i like have a commitment to it so i think it was important just to kind of just get a routine for it get a feel for it and see just see ultimately if I liked it um because it is I'm taking up my free time to do this because I'm because I'm not getting paid my actual time is going into this Uh um yeah I think sorry no carry on no no I'm sorry (laughs) so when (laughs) hipster offered you the gig did you already know by then okay this is something I want to do on the regular or did the hipster offer kind of cement that that feeling for you or was it still were you still saying hmm i'll try this hipster thing still not sure um so i wrote for debt text for a couple of months i think after the first month i kind of knew what i wanted to do mm-hmm. um, and it was that point where i was like i'm gonna start pushing it a little bit and just see how far i can go and then hipsters came along going oh you know we really like your stuff we'd love to have you on board for modern i'm like yeah sure and it's even better i'm more encouraged by it because i'm getting paid for it as well yeah that because i hear money is a good motivator for things i think also money is kind of a validator too it's agreed it it says okay you're getting paid so it's validation that what you're doing has some kind of value which is it's a sad thing that that sometimes money is the only validator for for some people but it, it is very nice to get paid for something you love doing agreed um and at this point um so Another bit of background. Um, I have no qualifi- like no degree in like writing or anything like that. I just did this on the off chance and kind of self-taught myself yeah. how to write. So this is like, I'm coming into this like fresh and new. Um, but yeah, it was really nice affirmation from multiple people that they thought I was good enough to be paid, and that was a massive encouragement because at one point I had a lot of confidence issues, I like mm-hmm. self-confidence. I didn't think I was that good, but clearly if a hundred people think I'm good enough, then they all can't be wrong, you know, <laughs> as like a, you know, so. But yeah, yeah. like the, the hipster thing was a really nice affirmation. And at the time it was a really good platform. Like hipsters has a good reputation for breeding good writers. So I was very right. excited to join at the time. It's, it is, it is a great place for uh, writers also tackling some of the harder issues in the magic community yes. and stuff like that and i think it's a it's a great place to write and uh, I, it was cool it's cool to see the people who come from hipsters and move into other places uh, to, of writing like you did with tcg player yes um there's been a few other writers as well um such as kendra smith who she uh she wrote for hipsters for a while and then got a gig at cool stuff inc so there is some clear progression um, right and I also learned quite a lot of hipsters as well, like how to edit and like just getting feedback and knowing um, what I need to do to improve as a writer. Their editing team is very good. And, you know, if you get an opportunity to write for hipsters, go for it because it's a really good um, like entry level into writing, I think. I think that's a great I think it's a great story. Your story is really great because I wanted to ask about you're writing articles about writing and creating content. I was. I was wondering, do you have these, uh, what would you call them, like uh, schooling or any background in that? And you answer that question. And I think it's it's great because some people believe that, hey, you have to have schooling. You have to have a degree 
in writing or something like that to really ascend the the different platforms right but you've proven that you don't uh, i don't have a degree in writing and i've written for uh, a lot of magic sites so it's a it's a neat story so people can can i guess reach for something that maybe they wouldn't have reached for before no, I agree. And to be honest, I kind of want to go back into education with writing. I, I wouldn't mind doing like a degree in creative writing at some point. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, I just think it, I enjoy writing enough to to learn at, at an ac- academic level. How and crazy I, is that? You started yeah, with, this, know, right? uh, with this diary <laughs> of modern stuff and now it's kind of... Uh, kind of spurred you on to even go deeper into your writing and, yeah, and learn it, more. It, it just kind of proves that not just in content in life that the smallest, most like innocent things could just mean like just impact your life in such a big way. Right. So um, the T. Te- oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, carry on. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. We'll figure it out. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, <laughs> it's two, two people in a traffic light. You know, are you going to go? Am I gonna go? Uh, um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, um, the question I had is so okay. TCG player, uh, who, who contacts you from TCG player? Is um, it? It was Pete, who is the managing editor. He approached me about becoming a columnist for TCG player. And how does that go? Like, was it an email or a DM? Yeah, it was or... just it was just an email. Um, so a little bit more story. So I left Hipsters of the Coast in uh like mid August last year. Uh Um, the reason I left was because I wasn't quite comfortable with the whole, um, quote unquote clickbait articles, um, and their approach to that. I mean, it was not, it wasn't the reason I got into content and what I wanted to do. What hips want to do is completely fine. I have nothing against it. It's just like on my, on my moral compass, it's not something I wanted to do and didn't feel comfortable being affiliated with. You didn't want to align your content with something that doesn't align with your, your style or your, your own personal. Yeah. It's beliefs. just, I think, I think the magic community could do with less of that kind of content, to be honest. Uh-huh. I don't think it's needed. It's not something I want to be a part of. So after thinking about it for a month or so, Spectre Rich, who's the uh, the head of Hipsters, just explained the situation. Just like I'm not comfortable writing for right. Hipsters because you have this direction, and I want to go in this other direction. So clearly, there's an impasse. So you know, I left. Um, and don't get me wrong, they're doing really well now. They've got some great writers, and I don't, I don't regret my time at Hipsters. They really nurtured me and helped me grow as a writer. Um, it's just I've guess i've grown out of hipsters a little bit perhaps right and and just to be clear um you know i think this kind of stuff is is good to at least talk about a little bit because it's important in the content journey to see okay you at this point were a growing writer and you saw some kind of conflict you know of of where where you where you wanted your own personal brand and where this uh brand was going and not to say, not to call someone wrong or right, it's just that you saw a conflict with where you were going and you made a decision about that. So it's also good for content creators to see some of that stuff. Whereas typically maybe somebody who's a content creator will try to keep everything kind of, uh, how do you say, uh, kind of, I don't know, surfacy, you know, about, oh, I left hipsters uh, just for yeah. some difference of agreement, you know, or whatever. Uh, at least we get to see a little bit of a picture into what you were thinking and what kind of stuff led to your departure. Yeah. I just, I guess I didn't want to be associated with that kind of content either. Like, mm-hmm. I, I care a lot about my reputation right? and um, I think there's enough clickbait articles knocking around as it is. I don't think there needs to be more of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and plus I just wanted to write about magic as in the car game and f- formats and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and I just found that to be a lot more difficult at a site that's trying to promote other aspects of, of, of magic. So it was a tough decision. It wasn't a decision I made lightly. So you you left there and you were uh, kind of floating for a little bit, I guess, before the TCG player thing, right? Yeah, so I gave it like a week um, just to switch off from content for a little bit, took like a week out. Uh-huh. And then I I popped something on Twitter just going, hey guys, I'm like a free agent. I'm looking to write about at this point modern because Pioneer didn't exist. 
Right. Um, you know, hit me with your best offers, essentially. Um, and I've got a lot of interest, and TCG Player was one of those sites. Um, there was like five websites all together in the space of a few days that were interested. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember all of them. I know TCG Player was one. Car Kingdom was the other, but I had some. I did some previous work for them. Um, yeah. And Mage Market was another one. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, um, but they didn't really have much in the way of written content, as in I would be brought in to start that, um, which was kind of tempting to uh, to create something from the start. However, it was just a lot of work for what they were asking, like payment wise. Um, right. And plus, I, you know, when TCG approached me, it was just really hard to say no to not say no to them, <laughs> given, given their legacy. Like they've been around for decades. And yeah, like, and some of the big, rat. some big names, right, for TCG. So to yeah, be, yeah, no, like, I'm right alongside like Seth Manfield and Brian Brown doing. Like you don't get to do that every day. So. No, that's a, that's an excellent. Yeah. So. So they, uh, so were you, when you got the email, were you just uh, expecting it? Were you un- not no, expecting it? And just I was, like, I was just was watching some Twitch stream, just watching some magic. And I got an email notification from Pete, just uh, going uh, weekly column for TCG player. And I was like, okay, hello. You know, I better read this. <laughs> um, and it just basically said um, him, him and John were very interested in having me on um they want they're going to read more of my content to get an idea where i can fit within tcg player um and i just said to them yeah i'm really interested let, let me know what you think sort of thing and it kind of just went on from there and uh did they like did they and if you can't sit speak on this that's fine but yeah. if the, did they give the price or did you negotiate or how did that whole uh, thing about the around the, they, the money go? they gave me a price and that price is so this is this is a good thing for website for writers in general um if you want to write for a website they tend to give you a flat rate per article as opposed Mm to um so they'll give you be like say 50 dollars per article and you write four articles a month you kind of get an idea um yeah they they come with me at a rate i was happy with the rate it was more than i was on a hipsters that's that's what i'm (laughs) yeah that's kind of cool uh you have to look at the the different exchange rates so for you, it's different, and for people in Canada and stuff like that, it's yeah. Because the exchange rate here is awful. Because thanks Brexit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I've uh, you know I've done a lot of negotiating writing gigs for myself because I I written for different sites and stuff like that, and I know that's one of the topics that feels very kind of dark for content creators and stuff like that. Mm. Knowing what to ask for, knowing um what is what is even what do people get paid you know nobody knows you know? yeah yeah so you, it, I, like, i'm not asking some, you to you know give your your number or anything no i'm like not going to give my sure. number it's just yeah, yeah, some yeah. websites prefer to pay in store credits some prefer to pay in cash like and I, I imagine the tax laws in america are a lot different now as well so that right influences it as well what i found is that maybe like uh like you said there the starter places will offer just kind of exposure or editing and to work with you on your writing if you're just starting out and then i think most places i wouldn't say most places but like the next step would be like 10 or 15 dollars an article Mm. and then um the next step after that is probably 25 to 50 dollars an article Mm. and I think after that, uh, if you start to become, I think, mid-range, you know, kind of a uh, certain level ab- above, you've been creating content for a little bit, then I think uh, $100 an article is not something that you could, um, is something that you could, you can ask for, you know? You can ask for it. They might say no, but you can ask definitely ask for it. And it, it also depends on, like, competitive success as well, right? Um Right. Like PV, for example, writing for SCG, I imagine he gets paid quite a hefty amount per article, given his success as well as writing for SCG. Right to give to give a ceiling, okay? Because yeah. I, I want to just throw some numbers out there for people to kind of understand. I, like I said, I've been in the content gig for a long time, so I've seen a lot mm-hmm. of numbers, and I'm not giving anybody specific number or anything like that. But mm-hmm. I will say that you know um, this information's old. Uh, I'm not going to say how old, but it's pretty old. And there was a time where 
uh, a pro tour champion got offered three hundred dollars for their turn tournament report. You wow. know, and, and yeah, three hundred dollars. I think it was even a three hundred dollar an article gig for so long. You know, uh, as long as a lot of times websites will want to say, okay, here's a pro tour champion. We want them to write for us for the next three months or until the next pro tour. Mm. And, and then we can, you know, reevaluate at that time so they can give us some kind of offer. So I'm just saying that, you know, there, there's definitely room to make uh, money in the, in the business of writing. And it's really, I think a lot of times writers are too afraid to ask for. I think, I think the, issue people have is they don't know how to value their time so right. the way i do it so the way i knew that what tcg would offer me was good is that i base it on an hourly rate right so, so it takes me like three hours let's take say it takes like three hours for me to write an article i will uh -huh. divide whatever number tcg gave me divide that by three and that's my hourly rate right and the hourly rate was pretty good i'll say and it it was worth my time doing I think that right. is a really good way to, to look at it or even look at what you're paid in your regular job as a salary, what's your hourly rate and kind of uh -huh. work it from there. Right. And, and, and not only, I guess payment is not the only thing that matters. I'm just talking about this stuff because it's stuff that people don't talk about often. And no, I agree. There's some intangible stuff that you get from being a TCG player writer. You get the status of being mm. TCG player, you get to, uh, I noticed that with your articles and we'll talk about that in a minute, but your articles, you do a great job of telling people to go to your Twitter, yes. which is a, is a great process that I think a lot of writers don't do, but they should. It's like distilling your audience into your Twitter so that if you ever decide and you, you know, who knows if you will or not, but if you ever decide to move away from TCG player, or if you ever take on another project, then all those TCG player audience that you've acquired through writing for them can now follow your journey somewhere else. Yeah, I think it's important to have a social media footprint when you do content, whether that's videos, articles, podcasts is another one. Right. Um, I think it's important just to keep that sort of trail of your social media. And to be fair, TCG player do a really good job of incorporating all that in like the footings of, of your articles as well exactly yeah so what i wanted to i want to kind of switch gears here if that's okay with you yeah of course. And, and talk about written content um in general is so there's a lot of things going on we got we got podcast we have streams uh wizards of coast has been putting a lot of emphasis on streamers uh we have youtube content and it feels like writing is getting um it's the space for writing in magic content feels like it's shrinking. Do you agree or disagree with that? I, that, that concept of the shrinkage. I, think, of... I agree. It's shrinking, but I don't think it means that the written content is bad or less important. I just think a lot more people are playing stuff such as arena, which wizards are making a huge push for in terms of streaming and whatnot. Um, yeah. Um, I still think written media is very important. It is the most effective way of creating content. Um, uh, it doesn't rely on absurd amount of data. It's easily searchable through through websites and whatnot. Um, and it's just easier to digest as well. You don't have to skip to various parts of a video. If you're after a certain bit, you can just mm -hmm. search for it. It's a lot more attainable in terms of like digesting information. Um, but yeah, it's weird because written content always kind of had this bit of a stigma for being a bit old and a bit outdated. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily agree with that. Maybe I'm biased because I'm a writer, so perhaps, <laughs> perhaps I might say that. You would um, say that, wouldn't you? <laughs> perhaps. Um, but as long as like newspapers and stuff exist, written content is just going to be as important as ever, I think. Um, and... I like the point you made about SEO because, uh, you know, yes. search engines are are built on written content at the moment right yeah and seo is like becoming really important if you want to um get your content found and whatnot um which will be another part in one of my written series at some point try and figure out what seo is and trying to make it uh, understandable because it can be quite convoluted at times 
I think that's a great topic to to tackle in one of these articles. So uh, for those who are listening, Emma has written these articles about writing and creating content. Now there's four of them? There's four, right? Correct, yeah. I did and the fourth one this week. It's called The Beginner's Guide to Writing Content. Now, what what did you... what? Okay, you're writing about modern. What makes you want to write this? This is a, a hard shift. Now, I know you haven't shifted completely to writing only about this, but this is definitely different than modern strategy content. Why why the why the addition to your So I've kind of had it on my mind for the last like month or so before I wrote the first part. And to be honest with you, I wasn't too sure if TCG player wanted it because it's so it's so left field. It's not really magic related. It's not mm-hmm. it's not going to really drive any sales of their singles or anything like that. But Again, going back to my point, um, you know, you've got nothing to lose, so you might as well go for it. Um, I men- I mentioned it to Pete, I'm like, I have this idea. I want, because for me, um, I really like helping people. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important that if you're in, if you're either experienced or got a good um, sort of platform, I think it's really good just to share, informa- share information and share your experiences. Um, and also, I've I've seen no one write about how to get into written like written magic content. I've seen plenty of like video ones and streaming ones and podcasting ones, but written ones n- none seem to exist. So I feel like it was a good sort of market to tap into. Um, and plus, I want to encourage. I want to see more writers, people writing about magic, because as we were saying earlier, that um, you know written content is a bit on the downswing. And I just wanted to prove a point that you can do it and it is really easy and this is how you do it. And plus it helps SEO for TCG as well. I imagine that was the other bonus. <laughs> yeah, I was... Uh, it's, I'm, I'm a big fan of creating content that, that doesn't go redundant, like future-proofing. And stuff like this is always going to be relevant, no matter right. how old it is. They call that long-tail content or stuff that will people can search up and find you know, months later or years later. Mm. Yeah, this, and, and this is it. And to be honest, I wasn't confident TCG would go for it because, as I said, it was very left field. Um, and I mentioned it to Pete, and he was just like, this is a great idea. We want to we wanna run it. I'm like, okay, cool. I better get started then. Like, <laughs> I wasn't expecting just a yes off the, yeah. off the bat. Um, but no, Pete really liked the idea. Um, again, for it's really because TCG kind of want to branch out a little bit. Yeah. Um, and that SEO and finding that sort of long tail content is something they're interested in. So, and it's really good platform to have it on as well. It means more eyes are on it. So, and it means it can help more people. So, I was I was taken by the series. Like I said, one of the reasons was because I felt the same way that you did. Where, hey, there's nobody's writing about content creation in general. Stuff about how to use Twitter, how to market your content how to de- develop your tribe you really don't need to be widely known you just need a tribe of people who support your content uh who you write for and that tribe will slowly grow by word of mouth and by people who support you it's and like word of mouth the most effective for marketing as well right it's important just to get it out of there People are much, much more likely to take their friend's word for your content than your own. So, Agreed. yes, if you share your own article, that that has a, only so much chance of actually someone clicking on it. But if somebody shares your article and says, oh, I read this, this is great. That has a way higher chance of being clicked on and, and being read. Yes, this is, I agree. Um yeah, it was interesting to write about, um, and it was kind of it's kind of cool just to look back and go over my experiences. Again, there is no qualifications. I have no written qualifications or content marketing qualifications. This is just all from personal experience, what I've what I've kind of learned and what mistakes I've made and whatnot, and just thrown it into a series. And I think it's going to help a lot of people, which is the one thing I'm interested in. And even the feedback's been really great. I've had people I've had people email me their like, article concepts and want me to proofread stuff. And I think that's really cool. Um, just helping other 
writers and for various sites just trying to get their feet off the ground right wow that sounds cool and uh, if anybody who's listening wants to read those articles those are going to be in the show notes uh, all four links i've read all of them i think they're great uh, i even picked up some tips from from them uh and uh i i started to use the hemingway app uh, that you recommended hemingway app's very good oh man i i'm probably so gonna good. buy it for my <laughs> laptop because it's so good it, it also i mean I think in Magic Writing, sometimes uh, because of the slang, the Hemingway way app doesn't like your sentences. But you can get past that, I think. Uh, and it, it's a very useful tool. Yeah, I swear by Grammarly myself. I think it's a great bit of kit. Oh, yeah. Grammarly is great. I, 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 I was using Grammarly before I read the articles. But the Hemingway thing was a new thing for me. And I was like, oh, this is very cool. So, And that's not the only thing. There's, lo- there's lots of good uh, <laughs> good ideas. and and. Uh, advice in these articles so uh, what i guess i had one last question here and then we can talk about whatever you want uh or we could close it down but one thing that i i found interesting is that again you're from england Mm -hmm. and you're creating content and you've been able to secure a writing gig at tcg player which is a a great accomplishment is did you find the geographic distance making i guess making it hard for you because like when i picture people who are trying to get out there content wise a lot of things that i see is people going to uh gps and kind of getting their face in the in the crowd you know the, the yeah, crowd like networking that's, sort of thing yeah, isn't the it? networking yeah. stuff and and through those relationships they get uh, endorsements and uh, through those endorsements, they get uh, what, what are they called? Clot points. <laughs> yeah, lo- lots of clout. <laughs> yeah, all the, all all the, the clout. clout. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and, you know, I, I see that as, and not to say that, hey, this is their, their people who are are mixing it up that way. I'm not saying that their primary goal is is only to get clout or whatever, but it just seems to be a natural, uh, this, this kind of atmosphere naturally creates content creators, right? Mm. And, and so, I think you have less access to that, right? Oh yeah, um being in being in the UK. Um right. so we have a, on average um like two magic fest a year compared to America where you have probably about 20. Um yeah. uh in terms of con- does content creation affect or does the prospect of content creation affect my geography? I don't think it does. I think if anything it creates m- a better position for me because I'm not in like one of the bigger countries like America. Uh-huh. Um, like I've got a great example. So you know, Pleasant Kenobi, right? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he's one of the probably one of the most popular British content creators. Um, right. He's currently sponsored by uh, Channel Fireball as well. Um, uh-huh. And seeing PK ascend into that level that threshold of like popularity and doing really well is giving me confidence and encouragement that I can be that I can do that too um admittedly um I think it's more important to tap into the American businesses as opposed to being in America so I PK, see. PK managed to do that with CFB I've managing that with like TCG player because yes America has the biggest audience because there's all the big retailers are American and there's just a higher population. Um, but yeah, like it's the World Wide web. I don't think you're defined by your geography anymore. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm, inc- I'm encouraged by what PK does. And I did think that at one point, but I think it's just going to create more opportunities because when people think, oh, British content creators, they're going to think of this small list of people as opposed to an Ameri- like American content creators where you have a huge list of people and you might yeah. not even make it. Um, I see. Yeah, that's the way I see it, at least. Um, that's a good analog and a good perspective, uh, obviously. I mean, <laughs> you would expect that. But, you know, <laughs> I, I wouldn't have thought of PK, and that's, that's very cool because, like, uh, it's true. In the last, uh, I would say, like, year and a half, he just, yeah, it's been it's been about a year since he's done full time content yeah, creation. Yeah, he just exploded, insane. right? Yeah, admittedly, CFB do, does have offices in like Ireland, which is uh-huh. fairly close. But again, it's an American company who's traveled to America. Um, right. So don't don't worry if you're in like a small country and you're worried your content's not going to get far. It will get far if you push it. 
um a lot of it's based on how good it is and how passionate you are and as long as you've got those two you'll be fine so are there any plans for you to come to america and visit uh, i'd love to go to the american magic fest i kind of kind of got my eyes on vegas one day all right come on tcg flip the bill that's that's, that's like the big one (laughs) yeah that would be be really cool because like uk magic fests are fine there is a lot a lot the turnout is quite high because they're so sparse Mm -hmm. Um, but i imagine american events are a lot more um over the top and far far more people yeah that's the that's the the tiny island of england lots of people for sure yeah um yeah, it'd be cool just to network and kind of t- meet up with some American content creators and whatnot as well. Cool. That kind of thing, so. so is there anything that you think we missed or that we should talk about uh, before we um... wrap things up? I've been having a great time talking, but, you know, oh, yeah. we, we do have to. <laughs> this is nice. Like I don't get yeah. to talk about content often, so it's, it's really nice. Um what do you think about written content what's your thoughts on it because you've been doing it for quite a while be interesting to see your perspective i think what's going to happen in written content is that the weaker content creators will uh fall off so Mm. uh there's going to be only so much room that i think i think retailers and people who uh, offer written content will continue to do that but their budget for it is going to shrink a bit and they're going to be looking to hire quality writers and and people who are and and this is not to to kind of um, discourage anybody anybody who's looking to get into content if you don't feel your writing is good enough or that it needs to be improved or something there are so many people who will help you to get better if you have the desire so myself included I'm right. happy to help as well <laughs> and and <laughs> I've sorry. I've done that for people as well and I'm happy to help also do editing and stuff like that. And it's, so there is plenty of paths to get better, but I think you'll, you will have to get better uh, in the future because again, the budgets are going to shrink. And also it might paint a bad, a bad sign for those who are kind of at the, at that higher mark. Remember I was talking about, you know, some people making up to $300 an article or Mm. who knows, who knows what kind of contracts are being drafted at the top end. I have not, been too privy to some of that information and maybe with the with the budget shrinking they'll be shifting that stuff into uh video content or stuff like that yeah arena is a massive role player in in video content currently is what wizards really want as well so writing about it can kind of damage that a little bit i think yes and i think finding ways to write content about arena is something that is not being explored too much right now so i could see an article that has clips from you playing arena or clips of of different matches and stuff not long clips but clips it's it's no different to um saying people like corbin hostler or pk writing like doing videos of their 5-0 league for example and just breaking up into each match like you could easily do something like that with arena no doubt but again like that that is a good point i have not seen many people write about arena i've seen people video arena or chat about arena on podcasts but in terms of writing it's not something you see often exactly and i think so i think that uh on the broader scape we'll see less written content better written content but less uh, we see budgets shrink for written content. And then um, I I expect as a writer, I'm happy to continue because I, I just want to be one of the better writers, one of the better content creators in the writing space. If if I can't get to that point, then I maybe will find something else to do because in the end, I don't want to waste anybody's time with stuff that's not good enough to read. Oh, and, I'm the same. I have the same mentality as you. Yeah, exactly. Because I think like for me at the, at the core, like I'm a curator, I like Mm. to take all of the stuff that I see that I think is really great. And I like to share it with other people. And a lot of times I repackage that into an article. And if I'm not functioning as a curator in the end, I'm not doing my role. And I, I just will find something that is helpful instead of doing that. Maybe I'll do something behind the scenes or whatever. One other thing that I found interesting as I was thinking about content and whatnot, as a writer, something that could be done is uh, something that I noticed 
is it with YouTube content, a lot of that stuff is written before it is recorded. The best stuff is written before yes. it's recorded. So if you look at someone like uh, Magic Man Sam or Ristic Studies, uh, same same person, by the way. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, Ristic Studies, his stuff is basically essays that are made into videos. Yes. And the same thing with the professor. The professor is actually was a professor of English, I think. Yes, he was. <laughs> and, and, and did creative writing and whatnot. So a lot of the professor's videos are definitely written before they're videos. Yeah, you have, to, you have to have some kind of script, right? It's no different to like us doing this podcast and having podcast notes. It's the same sort of structure. Right. So I don't think writing, I think writing is the core of a lot of things. Uh, videos and it's, it's the bread and butter of content and i think it will always will be right so you'll need it so i think that there will be a need for it whether that need is bigger or lower time will tell but i still i would be very surprised to see if you know magic has no written content at some point that just seems so far-fetched to me i i agree and i i think there may there may be a, a time of correction because Right now, the the arena is being pushed and whatnot, but you have to return to some of this stuff in the future, right? I mean, people they still have record players and and are buying vinyl now. This is <laughs> it. It's like it's like it's like what I said about newspapers earlier. Like newspapers still exist. That is a written medium, you know. As long as that kind of content exists, I think online like articles and stuff is absolutely fine. Um, yeah, I agree. It's it it'll be interesting to watch unfold. Nobody is an expert, so you know, I'm saying all my my thoughts, but content marketing is one tricky beast to read, so Th that's another thing that you actually made a good point there is content marketing is something you have to do with your writing, but it's a skill that you can translate to lots of things in life in general. Oh, agree. Like when I've noticed from the 2 years or so of doing writing, like my English is just generally better. Like my written English is better. My speaking English is better. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a really like, another another thing. Um, if you do like writing or any form of blogging or article stuff on the side, put it in like your resume or your CV because employers love that kind of stuff. Right. Just, um, I got my current job from saying that I I was writing for Hipsters of the Coast. Oh in wow! My, in my you know like my you know the personal bit at the end like any cool fun facts or anything that you do in your spare time i just put you know i write about magic the gathering on a weekly basis uh paid for the for hips of the coast and that was the tipping point where i got my current job oh so, that's that's so cool don't, don't cool knock story. it until you try it so yeah, yeah um it helps that my job does involve a level of social media um which contributed but you know it it's a good thing to put in there because it just shows that you're driven and if you want to do something, you can do it. Um, so, yeah, that's that's another good point to put in, um, which I'll probably put in an article at some point. But So with social media, you do uh, – that's one thing I noticed is you're very good at social media on Twitter. Do you hmm. use any other social media platforms or would you recommend any other? I use Instagram, but Instagram's weird because I'm a writer and Instagram is mainly images. Um, right. I haven't quite tapped into Instagram like – I don't know how it works, but I know how Twitter works very well. Um, Instagram's a little bit, I need to figure that out somehow. Uh, maybe do some booster openings or more pictures of magic cards. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what people like. Um, <clears throat> um, but yeah, I have Instagram. It's the same as my Twitter handle, which is Mzine. Um, but yeah, I, I use it once in a while, but I should use it more, if anything. But I just en enjoy Twitter because... The, the reach is far easier because I write about magic. I think it's right. a really good platform if you want your content out there. If I, I was agree. doing if I was doing like videos or, or something like that, like doing YouTube videos or Twitch streaming, Instagram would be perfect because that media complements Instagram really well. It's more um, of a visual platform. Yeah, it's more of a visual platform, whereas my content at the moment is not very visual. So that's why I've kind of thrown all my eggs into the Twitter basket for now. <laughs> um, yeah twitter has been really really good to me uh in in the past and and now that i'm writing again so i i highly commend it to those who are trying to write 
uh, yeah. to be part of the Twitter Twitterverse, so to speak. Yeah, it's really easy to network on Twitter as well. It's insanely easy once you know the right people and know the right like, accounts to tweet at. Right. I think the Twitter thing is, you know, there's cer- certain accounts that, uh, you know, have access to influencers or are influencers or stuff like yeah. that. And if, if you get into the right stream, uh, you could be discovered or noticed. And it's uh, it's also good to just meet people and, and find uh, people of like mind and people who are interested in your content or find your content interesting. I like Twitter a lot. Mm, I like it. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't feel too invasive either, which is another thing I like about Twitter. Yeah, that's one of the things I'm still trying to figure out is the balance of self-promotion and content. Because I think that so in on Twitter, you can have Twitter content, things that you tweet that's like, even though it's just a tweet, it's, it is content. You maybe put a lot of time and thought into thinking. Yeah, it's like... Um, talking about Theros Beyond Death, for example, is that me being excited as a person, or is that the content creator and me being really excited? Like, right. you kind of need to like pull, like identify which you want to be. Um, <clears throat> I mean, for me now, my Twitter feels like it's my brand. Um, I see it more as, as a business Twitter, to be honest with you. Right. <clears throat> because if I say something wrong on that Twitter, I probably going to get in trouble with someone at some point um (laughs) it's not i I have to be i have to censor myself a little bit um Uh, because i don't want to upset my audience i don't want to upset you know any 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 other like uh twitter accounts and whatnot so i think a lot of people could learn from that i do think we live in a society where we tend to project our thoughts onto social media quite easily Right. Where we should probably not do that all the time. Maybe but, just start a journal that's a paper journal that you can maybe start a journal those... or have like a private Twitter, which is I've right. a lot of people do, just to decompress and not have to worry about you know judgment from others or from the, from their mass audience. Right, um, I've seen that been quite a common one amongst like the more popular people, especially Magic Twitter. It seems quite popular. It will be funny when we get to the age where we all have regular. Twitters and private Twitters because it'll yeah. just be like we're all hiding out in our private Twitters talking about the things that really yeah, matter and, to us and then and, on the regular you know, you, Twitters. You, yeah, you just talk to the same person on two different yeah. accounts. Like yeah. <laughs> it's like the the mask on one Twitter, the the real person in the in the yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's uh <clears throat> Now I have to be careful what I say because you know <laughs> Yeah, the magic community is pretty unforgiving to be honest. So oh, man. You really have to be walking in the minefield and not get blown up. It does feel like that, but as much as much flaws as the magic community has, I do love them. Uh, well, don't get me wrong; the magic community is absolutely fantastic, but it right. has its moments. It's right, always- we're all. I think we're all processing pain at some level, and there, there's so much damaged people, you know, including myself. That yeah, I think it's partly that, and I think it's just partly that we really love magic. Right. I think that's what it boils down to. We just really love the game admittedly there are better ways to go about how to project that love and that appreciation than you know complain or moan or be negative or whatever but i think it comes from a good place and in most cases it is it is interesting that how heated the debates can get over things like you know cards or sideboards (laughs) or or how to present your content or whatnot And, and again i think a lot of it comes down to that passion for the game and for the community there's so much everybody wants it to be a certain way and yes. they're so they have such a strong opinion about it and it's not a bad thing to have a strong opinion so you just see that clashing a lot and absolutely i do think also um magic's gone through a lot of change in the last three to four years and i don't think you're gonna have people who just greatly dislike change like no matter right who they are you know um like since the inception of arena magic has just snowballed in popularity and just the amount of changes like the npl and the various sort of mythic championships and player tours and all these different competitive structures and stuff and it is it is really hard to keep up so i think some of it is just down to being overwhelmed right just not knowing how to process it 
Well, I think we'll get there together as a community. <laughs> I, I agree. It just need it just needs to like have no change. Just just to settle, which I don't know if it's going to happen. <laughs> give us a, give us some the rate of people wizards. complaining. Like <laughs> wizards might change a lot, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think it all comes from a good place. It's just there are better ways of broadcasting that, which some people might learn, some people won't. Right on. Well, is there mm-hmm. anything else? I think uh, I think we'll have to probably get together again sometime. We can talk Absolutely. about you. You have uh, you like to talk about Pioneer, and I love to talk about that too. I love and Pioneer. You also have uh, you've also been doing some MTG fitness, which sometime we'll yes. have to talk about because I know I need to do that. I don't, but uh, a yeah. lot of people are interested in that, and uh, so I think uh, there's a lot of content that we could tackle in Absolutely. the future. I'm definitely up for coming back. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on. Uh, yep. If uh, if you guys want to get a hold of me, you can get on my Twitter, which is Medina underscore MTG. That's M-E-D-I-N-A underscore MTG. That's where I share all my content. Uh, in the show notes, there'll be some links to like my Patreon and my Discord. And then if they want to get a hold of you, Emma, how do they do that? All right. So I am on Twitter at Mzine. So that is E-M-M-M-Z-Y-N-E. Um, my Twitch and Instagram are of the same name. Um, but yeah, if if any of you got any thoughts or queries or not too sure if you want to get into the writing thing, feel free to DM me because I am happy to help. My my DMs are open for any kind of um, for any help. Also, there is an email on my Twitter profile as well if you want to uh, reach out over email as well. That's really uh, kind of you. So again, it's been awesome having you on, and uh, we'll see you all next time. All right, and bye everyone. Bye-bye.